here we will look at using uh, XY Grib to view uh, a global model. So we'll focus here on a global model. And um, depending if we have time, we'll then also maybe compare uh, compare two global models. The, the, program has, um, the program has two global models in it. It's got the, the US one and then the French one, Arpege. Um, that one. So let's start out with the GFS and then uh, let's look at that. And so we're going to compare it to, um, you know, compare it to what we get on the, on the base maps, the base image maps, which is about that area. For example, if I go here, here's the Ocean Prediction Center, and I just now click this. The most recent map is uh, 1800. 1800 and and then that's that's what the map is and then I'm looking for you know something like about that area here and we'll take uh, so that's that then I come here to global model and we're going to take the GFS no wave data uh, we don't need that kind of resolution for what we're doing now um, um, and I'm going to look every six hours, say. You, and there's different arguments. I mean, when you're, when you're actually sailing, you may look at this a lot more frequently than that. And for now, let's just go out uh, four days. That's 96 hours. And we'll start with the last one, which I believe would be the 18 Zulu. And we'll just look at wind and pressure on the surface. But let's bounce up to the 500 millibar data. And uh, let's see, what do we got? If we include that, we're up to 1.5 megabytes. Again, that's way more than you would take, um, you would be able to do when you're underway on a satellite phone. But when you're planning your trip the night before, the few days before, you can take, you know, 10 times that, no problem, and, and study things. So here's a data. So let's just go ahead and take that one and get the data. And then I'm saving that, and that's a P50. Uh, okay, GFS P50. Okay, I remember that. Okay, so there's the data. Now, that's come, a few things are turned on here. Now, what's turned on? Uh, and we're going to have to modify things a little bit. I think I have the stock settings here. This may be the stock settings, uh, you know, where it comes out of the box. So the wi so wind is turned on. So that wi that color code is the wind, wind, and that's this color bar over here. So this yellow is yeah, like at 1820 knots. This orange here should be, you know, getting bigger. There, oh, well, there's a, there's the icon, 30 knots. Oh, that's pretty big wind. Um, and I'm on a Mac, so I can hold my finger down on the command key and uh, still look at this. So that's 30 knots, and you see over here is 30 knots. So that's about right. And I'm, I, I just roll the mouse. The mouse is rolling, changing the zoom level like that. And so that is that. Um, and that looks good. And then we're altitude. You see, we're looking at where the wind and the altitude, the wind is 10 meters. And we've got higher elevation data. The thing here, we can, I can think we can see these isobars OK, like this. But if we want to, we could go in here, graphical parameters. Here's the isobars. And let's, we could tack them up a little bit. Let's go up there. Let's go inside 1. Point, well, 1.6. And then let's make them red, just say for now, and just see what that looks like. Okay, so that's a little bit better, maybe, or I don't know, maybe that's distracting. But that's the surface isobars like that. Okay, if you wanted to do that. Okay, and then let me let me just undo that for the moment. That's just showing you some options there. Reset back to where it was. Okay. Oh, it looks like it kept the thickness, though. It changed the color back. Options, uh, graphical parameters. Yeah, but it didn't, um, isobars. Let's take them down just a little bit. OK, so we see. And the reason I want to do this is if we look through here, let's step through and just watch. Here's the Pacific high. And what's the value of the high? It's about a 1036, so that's really a nice high. And, and, there's two, and there's a couple isobar, more or less a couple around it. So it's, it's semi-stable and with that kind of configuration. Now, we can learn why it might be stable for a day or so by looking at the winds aloft. And I think that's these under here. You see, 
If you look over here on this part of the page, you're seeing that data. Uh, I don't see the wind for it yet, but I think if I want to see the wind, I would have to go up here, and there's wind, and now I have to go to altitude. Now look at the wind up here, and uh, in that case, the color bar, can I shut the color bar off? Um, altitude 500, well, maybe I can't. Um, Okay, um, but here's what I want to do. I want to get a better view of these, these, uh, the height of the 500 millibar surface, this data that's underneath here. And uh, so one way to do that is to go up here. Um, I want to, uh, let's see, altitude ISO line. So I'm going to turn off the surface ISO bars for now. That's that one. And look at the geopotential altitude at 500 millibars. That's right. And that must, yeah, see those little green lines went away. So that's uh, uh, altitude 500. We want those on. But the trouble is we can't see them. What we want to do is if I come back here, here's what the 500 millibar map looks like that we're used to seeing in weather facts and things like that. So to make your GFS pictures, you know, your uh, grib files look the be you know, to be the most comfortable, the most useful for you, you want to set them up so they look something like that, right? So let's go in here. Let's go back here to the window. People, what, what? No, no, okay. Options, uh, graphical parameters, and these are called the geopotentials. I guess they're geopotentials, and um, uh, let's just make them a lot thicker. Let's go up to say two on those. Let's see what that looks like. Good, that looks better. But now we have we have way too fine a spacing. These things are like 600 meters apart here. Uh, let's see what we've got here. ISO line, space, uh, 100 is the best we can do. That's fine. Well, maybe they're, huh, that's interesting. These are, look at these. Remember, that's 540, 546. These are in decameters. So these, di oh, these differ by 60, 60 meters. The difference between here and here is 6, and they're times 10, 60 meters, 60. So if I come back here to ISO lines, uh, spacing, then I go to 50. All right, good, finally, sorry. Okay, so now we're getting this picture to look pretty much like this one. Now we can look at, here's our surface high, and, and, uh, and, and we can step through here. Let's just go back to where we got the 18 Zulu, and then just kind of step through. And what, actually, what do we have here? This is the valid, I just got this down, is valid 12 Zulu, Zulu on the 4th. 12 Zulu on the 4th. So where are we here? Oh, look at that. That's excellent. 12 Zulu on the 4th. And it says it's going, and, and again, the area we're looking at is right here, right? This area right here. And you see this is five, 559 and 584. This, now right in here, is uh, five, you know, five, six hundred, something like that. And, um, oh, I can't read those numbers very well. I've got to get up there. Well, I had the wrong glasses, but anyway. So this is the analogous picture. And, and you see, so, so we're seeing that. And in fact, it's not entirely clear, frankly, I think I should say. I'm not sure that these maps that they put out here from the, for the 500 millibar maps, these maps may, in fact, be identical to the GFS. But they're going to always be close. Maybe not always identical, but they're going to be close. All right, so let's go then and just step through to see what happens. This kind of shape, you see, it kind of comes down, up and around, and back like that, like a Greek letter omega almost, right? So that's like an omega block. So that's pretty stable. These waves, these Rossby waves, tend to slide that way. But when they form in this kind of kink, they get stabilized a little bit. There's not a perfect block here at all, especially with this almost cut off low hanging around down here. 
this kind of surface, right? Like if you're going to Hawaii, this guy, which is almost cut off here, he's a problem because that mean that's up in the atmosphere that's up 500 millibars but that still means that can have if you read our textbook and how we evaluate a surface map this is a danger sign that the, the forecast could be a little weaker when you have to deal with these uh, this cut off high cut off low uh, okay so let me just step through and then you see ah there it does cut off so uh, and it can, then it gets gobbled right back up on this side. But anyway, so this is a little bit tricky situation. This forecast could be maybe uh, not as strong as we'd like. Okay, so there we go. We can get rid of, now that's what's going on upstairs. Now we can go back and look at the surface. You was, was on the wind, altitude, go back to the 10 meters above the ground. And now we go to ISO lines. We'll turn on the ISO bar, whoa. Those other guys are still on. Okay, off. ISO line, geopotential height, off. So you got to come over and take the check mark off. Okay, so there, now we've got the ISO bars. Now I think I'd be a little happier looking at this if I had my, um, my ISO bars a little more bold. So just go up and crank those guys maybe up to two. Okay, so now you've got a surface weather map you can deal with. And then the route, and it's got one tool. You can't leave these on permanently, but you can at least draw. Let's say you're going San Francisco to uh, Kaneohe. That's one of the yacht races to Pacific Cups, like that race right there, right? And then you could look at, then go here, and you can do a media table and look right at that spot. Well, that's not, excuse me. That's the great circle route. You wouldn't go that. The actual route from here to there anticipates the location of this high. So it comes down around like this. So the more logical, let me close that down. Whoa, whoa. What is that? Close. Okay, whoa. Wow. Um, I have to think through where, I have to think through where I was. The thing went. <laughs> Whatever button I pushed there was not right. It totally crashed my computer. Um, <laughs> that's kind of weird. Um, let's see, where were we? Well, anyway, we were looking at just a media. You can right click here and look at a media table that just shows you, you know, as a function of time, what the date is there. And um, that media table, let me just see if I can control its size. I. Um, Okay, so this everything, all every program takes a little practice to learn uh, how it works and so forth. Um, but anyway, so that's that, and um, those are uh, the, the. That's just an introduction to using the global uh, global wind data, and then you can you can step through step through and see how you anticipate the route. And we'll come back later in the course, but remember we discovered something that showed that this is going to be a weak forecast. I mean, it's going to be that we have a saying there's always going to be a forecast. But this one is going to be a rather weak one. Look here at this big trough. You have to I mean this this big I guess it's a ridge actually, a ridge, but this big ridge is uh, there's always kind of a little ridge here, but this look at this goes flat calm. So this is a tricky this is a tricky forecast, and this is a good example to see it. And I'll stop there. That's a, enough demo on uh, globals.